Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. we got a great show for you, a great cast of characters as well. Among them, these, a 93-year-old grandmother traveled to the U.S. with her grandson and just completed one heck of a journey. Also, a surprise in your medical bill. Usually that's a bad thing, but there's a woman in New York who got a welcome surprise on her receipt. What she find? We will explain. Plus, meet a trailblazing ballerina with the New York City Ballet. And Gail, as in King, sits down with Robert, as in De Niro, and Sebastian Maniscalco, plus a fourth star, Maniscalco's real-life dad. All that, plus our heartwarming videos, the ones you just need to see. Hey there, I'm Tony DeCopel. This is The Uplift, the show that lifts you up for the next 30 minutes, you and me as well. And we are going to begin with a follow-up, which is not typical, but you're going to remember this follow-up. You saw it on The Uplift. A 93-year-old grandmother and her grandson, they had a very steep goal. They wanted to visit all 63 U.S. national parks. Did they get it done? Well, here's Caitlin O'Kane. About eight years ago, Brad Ryan learned something about his grandma, Joy. She had never seen mountains or the ocean. Well, about all the traveling I did was to a fishing hole. <laughs> and when we went on, my husband took me to Okeechobee and we beached. When I learned that she'd never seen uh, the great wildernesses of America, deserts, mountains, uh, oceans, you name it, I thought that that was something that would haunt me if I didn't intervene in some way. Brad decided to take his grandma out of Ohio on a visit to the Great Smoky Mountains. That trip inspired a goal to visit all 63 U.S. national parks. The more I kept reading about the parks and I saw how close they were to one another, that we could make this giant loop, it, it became an obsession. And all I could think about was, I've got to see Grandma Joy at Old Faithful. And I've got to see her at the Redwoods. And I've got to see her at the Grand Canyon. I, I just I have to do this. I have to have those those memories for my own long-term happiness. Last year, Brad and Joy talked to us after visiting 62 national parks. The final one on their list, the National Park of American Samoa. American Samoa is an island community that is very firmly rooted in family. And I think that there's a, a bit of a poetic um, beauty to, the, to ending it there for that reason as well. This year, Brad and Joy talked to us again from American Samoa, the 63rd and final stop on their epic journey. I mean, Grandma, you can tell us some of the things that we've been doing. Mostly just riding around in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> she's like minimizing what she's been doing. She's actually been hiking through the rainforest. It's beautiful. I never saw such beautiful flowers in my whole life. And the leaves are gigantic. They've seen every corner of the U.S., but they aren't done traveling. They have plans to visit Africa this summer. Then they're tackling Canada. They reached their goal, all thanks to Brad's idea and Joy's positivity. I think the biggest lesson that I learned is the power of, of saying yes. Because I think about all the grandparents in the world that might have gotten a phone call on a Thursday afternoon hey, Grandma, would you like to go camping for the first time? And what that 85-year-old person would have said to them. And the fact that she said yes instead of I'm too old led to an awakening for both of us that brought us now over 60,000 miles on the open roads of the entire country, including places as, as remote as American Samoa. So show up for your life when an opportunity presents itself walk through that door and remember that life is always happening right now and it's up to you what what you're going to do with that gift i don't know someone take hr tell hr i'm going to take the next six months off and visit all 63 national parks myself i'm just kidding i'll be right here lifting you up you and me as well we're going to turn now to another story introducing you to a man who grew up in foster care and decided to dedicate his life to providing a family to others here's lilia luciano Going home is always always going up on that mountain and then coming back down. For Joe Tolls, the track to fatherhood runs straight through foster care. My mission, my purpose, is to help. Tolls grew up in foster homes and aged out of the system. Then he found a father figure and his track coach. He saw something in me that nobody else did. 
and he made me believe it. More than 23,000 children age out of the U.S. foster care system every year. 20% become homeless. After graduating college, Tolls made it his mission to adopt. What made you want to come back? Everything that happened to me in life was in preparation for me to be the best who I could be. He's adopted eight boys, all at risk of aging out. Xavier is Toll's first son. It was kind of like I didn't need a parent for all these years. Why do I need one now? At 18. At 18. Each discovered their own version of success. I had to get used to somebody actually seeing me, telling me it's okay to have emotion and express yourself. He gave his boys the gift of family. Why is it worth it? They're my kids. It's worth it because you fall in love. Lilia, thank you very much. And coming up, a chat with movie legend Robert De Niro in a hair salon. He plays Sebastian Mascalco's real-life dad in a new film. So, how did the real dad feel about meeting the on-screen dad De Niro's portraying? We'll show you. I called him, you don't believe nothing, right? I'm like, De Niro's gonna play you. He's like, yeah, right, come on. I don't believe it until I see it. <laughs> um, Go ahead. I put, I put so, in my, well, I no, like, when you, you know, said it, yes. I, I said, wait a minute, did I hear right? So I said, let me, hold on, let me get my hearing aid. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's impossible. I said, no way. Nothing is impossible. Plus our heartwarming videos, the ones you just need to see. Welcome back to The Uplift. We now we've got some heartwarming videos, the ones you just got to see. And we're going to start with one that's really going to get you going. It shows Ashley O'Donohue surprising her pregnant best friend with some news that she is pregnant too. they had the subtitles there because I didn't uh, exactly understand what's going on, but I could sense it, the emotion there, palpable. Ashley says that she and her best friend Summer are due, get this, just five weeks apart. All right, to our next video, it comes to us from High Point University, uh, where a beloved security guard there, Miss Val, stole the show at graduation. Students in their caps and gowns lined up to say goodbye to Miss Val. <laughs> And that really brought tears to her eyes. She told the uplift she was shocked that so many people felt it was important to give her a hug. She said, I wasn't really saying goodbye. It was more like see you later because she often sees students return to campus. When they come back, I'm sure they will say hello. Look at that. Hmm. All right, coming up, meet a trailblazing ballerina in the New York City Ballet. And why this woman was happily surprised when she received a receipt for her medical payment. Huh? We'll tell you what's going on after the break. Welcome back to our show and welcome back to Nancy Chen taking us to the New York City Ballet as it wraps up a historic spring season with a trailblazing lead. Her artistry and grace center stage. This spring, at just 21 years old, Mira Nadon stepped into a pinnacle role at the New York City Ballet, <laughs> the company's first ever Asian American female principal dancer. It does feel like a kind of new era in the company. What does that milestone mean to you? It's a big honor and something to grow into. Nadon began ballet at age five. Her mother, Bapasha, born in India, took her to classes near their home in Montclair, California. Now she says she's honored to be a part of the company's evolution. That's exciting for me to have some responsibility and feel like I can do something to help like the culture in our company. Nadon is among only five Asian American principal dancers in the company's 75 year history including current dancers Chen Wei Chan and Anthony Huxley. You've reached the pinnacle of your training. Artistic your director artist. Jonathan Stafford says the diversity of dancers has brought more talent to the stage. Why has it taken so long? 
I'm not happy that it's taken so long, but I'm really grateful that we've gotten to the point where we've crossed a milestone. And I think she will continue to inspire other generations of dancers. To look up at the stage and see such a variety of faces is so special. And that also just makes the company more interesting and even more vibrant. Nancy, thank you. And when Melody Morrow got the receipt for her physical therapy payment, she was shocked by what she found. But don't worry, it wasn't a bad surprise. Here's Steve Hartman with more. A few years ago, Melody Morrow of New York City hurt her foot and needed physical therapy. But she says what really made her feel better was paying the bills. You asked for a receipt. Correct. And it comes in the mail. Correct. And what was special about it? On the envelope, on the front of the envelope, it had these little music notes. Her name is Melody, but this is a big health system. Personal touches on billing statements aren't typically their thing. And then it began. Every month thereafter, her payment receipt arrived in the mail. And every month, a new drawing. They started out simple, like this treble clef. But as the months progressed, the envelopes got more and more elaborate. And this was original art, created anonymously just for her. It's hard to even describe. It was incredible. Melody did call her provider, MJHS Health System, and asked if by chance there was anyone in the billing department who was artistic. She says the phone got quiet, and then she heard, hey, Emily, it's for you. I'm like, uh-oh, what I do now? What were you hoping was going to come from this? I like to make people happy. Accounting clerk Emily Margolis is hardly a frontline caregiver, but she says she can still make people better, and her drawings are her way. Melody was so grateful, Emily decided to ramp up her game even further. <laughs> she began taking Melody's mailings home at night, and spent hours turning those plain white business envelopes into masterpieces. Then I started adding rhinestones. <laughs> I know I got involved with the gold leaf. That was fun. I had oh, never done that leaf. before. <laughs> yeah. Where was this going to stop? I, I know how much she had left to pay. <laughs> <laughs> this was the last mailing, but not the end of the story. Hello. Mwah. Melody and Emily became friends and are now co-curators of an exhibit at this Manhattan coffee shop, showcasing Emily's enveloping creations. Although Melody says what's really on display here is the healing power of kindness. This was a stranger, and she was doing that just for me. And that's the beauty of it. Still nothing better than a Steve Hartman story. Coming up, not many people can say that Robert De Niro played their father in a movie, but Sebastian Maniscalco, he dreamed it, and now he can say it. The two stars and Maniscalco's dad sit down with Gail King, star number three in that equation, to talk about the new movie about my father. Stand-up superstar Sebastian Maniscalco and screen legend Robert De Niro star in a new comedy about my father, loosely based on Maniscalco's real-life relationship with his dad. Gil King sat down with the two stars and the father at the center of the movie. Comedian Sebastian Maniscalco has sold out arenas across the country. Dad was working 18 hours a day. I think I formally met my dad when I was 18 years old. His dad, Salvatore Maniscalco, is a common theme in his acts. So we decided to meet up with him at this Chicago suburb deli in his neighborhood. They have a very special sandwich there. We heard this is where you can get a good Sebastian Maniscalco sandwich. You definitely heard correct, yes. Hi, you guys. How are you? What do you think, Salvo, when you come in and there's a, there's a sandwich named after your son? I can't believe it, really. You, I can't. Really? I'm, I'm, it's, it's great. What is it about him that you think is so good? I mean, that him growing up and hearing the stories of his childhood, I mean, I have the exact same stories. The I plant sandwiches at lunch and kids would laugh at me, like, I, I, <laughs> I have that. The school wasn't responsible if the veal piccata spoiled. I know, he's so good though. I hear you got so some amazing oh! sandwiches. Oh, so What's going on? How's nice it going? 
What's nice happening? Hi, oh, yeah. I'm so glad to see so you. Nice. I gotta ask you, what's the revenue on the sandwich I'm on? Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right, three Sebastian specials. Nice. Three Sebastian specials, okay. Mm. That tomato is yeah, fresh, good. fresh. Excellent on the sandwich, I gotta tell you. Beautiful, I love to hear that. So, what, was he a funny little kid? He was always, because he loves stage. Yeah. I mean, when I see him there and performing, I can really smile and say, yes, that's where I belong. But now, you know, he's funny, but you're such a big part of his act. Were you always comfortable with it? Always comfortable. You with were. It. Yes. You because never why? <laughs> <laughs> because of the money. <laughs> you can say anything about me. Tell us, Alvo, the relationship between the two of you, what it means to you. Family is a major thing for me. I mean, as a as a father, it's life. And Sebastian is highlighting their father-son bond in his new movie. It's called About My Father. Fifty years ago, I come to this country to give you a better life. Was it a hard story to tell for you? Not necessarily a hard. It was hard to perform, to act, because yeah. I don't generally do that. Now I'm doing it with one of the greatest actors who ever lived. Enter Robert De Niro. Never ride on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. The Academy Award-winning actor plays Sebastian's father. Dial it down with the, 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 with all the... The real Salvo has been a hairstylist since the 60s, so we sat down with his trio at a hair salon. I was curious about you, Bob De Niro, now that you played him, like if I wanted you to wash my hair, color my hair, braid my hair, could we go in the back and you could do that? No, I'd have to bring Salvo with me. <laughs> I was checking out your highlights on TV. So how did this come about, Sebastian? Did you say, Dad, I sure would like it if Robert De Niro played me in a movie? It, it was unreal that the man said yes, because you just don't think that Robert De Niro is going to end up playing your father. It's something that is, you know, it, it was like a, like a dream come true. You know, I called him, he don't believe nothing, right? I'm like, De Niro's gonna play you. He's like, yeah, right, come on. I don't believe it until I see it. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I put, I put so, in my, well, I no, like when you know. said it, yes. Uh, I said, Wait a minute, did I hear right? So I said, let me, hold on, let me get my hearing aid. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's impossible, I said, no way. I don't even know if you know what was going on on our side. You're just doing movies and we're sitting over here going, this is the guy I had on my wall as a kid. <laughs> so uh, it was super exciting. And I wonder what it's like for you when you hear people, what you just said, Sebastian, I had posters of, you know, movies of, of yours. Mm -hmm on his wall. What is it like for you to hear what you mean to so many people? I, I'm honored and flattered. Yes. I, at the same time, I cringe a little bit. Why? Because I'm, it makes me uncomfortable, but, but I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. <laughs> but but do, do you know you're that good, though? Do you know? <laughs> do you, you gotta know it, no? I mean, like, I when you me. watch yourself in a movie, do you go, oh my God. <laughs> I'm unbelievable. <laughs> I know. I often wonder that. Do you do you look at yourself? Are you a hard critic of yourself when you watch yourself on screen? Yeah, I mean, when I, I look at myself at certain things. I say, oh God, I can't look at that. Part of it is for vanity, but excluding the vanity part, what it is to do character-wise, what you're supposed to do, what the task is at hand. But there is a key scene in the end when it's a very emotional scene between the two of you. Was that difficult for you, Sebastian, that scene? Yeah, that was the scene that I was kind of pining over the whole time I was on set. Like, I'm gonna have to get emotional, I'm gonna have to cry, something I've never done on, on film. I go to him, I said, listen, I need help here. I don't know what I'm doing, uh, could you help me out? And he goes, well, you know, I didn't want to say anything. I don't know what your process is. And I'm like, my process is just hope. <laughs> hope this happens. Um, so, but then, wait, wait, before you finish, you have a process when it's time for you to cry? I think that's no, interesting. No, just no, I, the one thing is not to force anything or, or to try and get it or pull, push for it. it. Either you have it or you don't. The worst thing you could do is push for something that's not there. Better that you don't do anything. And that, that to me is the most important thing. And sometimes you can't, you know, it's like doing a play every night, a certain performance. Some days you can have it or nights and others you just don't. And you just, but you, you're a professional and you go through it, you do it. What did he say to you? No, no, he did. He said, think about your father when you do this, think about your father. And then I start, I, in, the, in the conversation, 
it got emotional between him and I. And I started crying in the conversation. I go, I, I, I gotta use this. So I'm running, crying, thinking about my dad. I come into the scene crying, right? I do the scene, right? And they yell, cut. All right, again? I'm like, again? <laughs> okay. It's all like that. So um, it, it, it just taught me a lot about getting to certain places while you're acting. Yeah. And but, you know, at the crux of the movie, it's a love story between families. Mm -hmm. And I ultimately think those of us with adult children, we want our children to be proud of us. And on the reverse, we want to be proud of them. Don't you think? Yeah, ultimately, that's the goal. I mean, now yes. that I have a son, you know, it. it I, I want him to look up to me like I look up to my dad. Yes. So uh, now that we're here in Chicago, when I left in 1998, 2023, sitting in the salon with my dad, and uh, sorry, Aww. it's uh, a, yes. it's a big, it's a big moment for me. And uh, yes. I just, I want to thank you for for being uh, playing my father, and I want to thank you for being the best father I could ask for. And sometimes I don't, um, sometimes I don't reflect on things that happen in my career and it's happening right now on your show. <laughs> so I think about this little boy that had Robert De Niro as a poster in his wall. I do think that that's big. That's yeah, big. Sal, did Robert De Niro capture your essence? Oh well, yeah, he did a fantastic job, I think. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm crying too now, see? <laughs> Gail King, batting cleanup for us today. That is our show. I hope it brightened your day. I hope it lifted you up. I'm confident it did. If it didn't, for some reason, the reruns are free. Meantime, I'm going to go find some good news.